Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Winter of Wellness. Again, we're, I think, about, did past the halfway mark now of this 60, day, 60 Days to Wellness, and I've just been really, it's been a real pleasure and a joy, and I hope you get a chance to listen to Coot Blackson from yesterday. He is um, fantastic. Allison actually hosted him, but he just is such an inspiring speaker and catalyst for, for the, all that is good in the world, so he's, he's kind of a rising star. Definitely check him out. And today we have the pleasure and honor to uh, to dive deep with a woman named Robin Benson, who uh, came on my radar with uh, a really remarkable series she created called The Self-Care Revolution. She's a uh, doctor of oriental medicine for the last 22 years, an adventurous world traveler and speaker really on optimum, optimum and radiant sustainable health. She's got, she does acupuncture, herbs, IV therapies, energy medicine, as well as a whole variety of kind of holistic practices and keeping her finger on the pulse of the whole self-care revolution worldwide. So, Robin, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's so great to be here. Great. Well, let's start with the, just the title of what you're up to, the self-care revolution. So why did you feel this was important enough to, to really dedicate your work, your life to it and make a series where you're featuring the pioneers from around the world? And creating a, another full-time job, which I have loved so much. My goodness, it's been quite a journey. I have to say, you know, after 20 years of being in practice, literally, you know, treating thousands of people and, and traveling the world and learning from some of the, the greatest uh, health teachers, indigenous people, I was asked by several people to say, you know, what is your most important message, Robin? What What is your big message to the world, um, especially based on, on this work that you've devoted your life to? And I said, it was really clear to me right away, self-care, because I see so much unnecessary suffering every day on my tables, and that um, you know, that, that suffering is optional. And in many cases, we see some of the diseases that we see in today's world, and there are supposedly 30,000 of them, that many of them are just created by our choices. And truly, when I think about, you know, 7 billion plus plus people on the planet, you know, to really make the impact that, I, that is really necessary to make this shift, to awaken each and every person to their own health and their, you know, to live their their purpose, their passion, to live in joy. It, it, it's really a lifestyle of self care. So that's what we've created. Uh, we're in our second season, and um, I'm just not only do we hear from the experts, but a lot of my practitioners are at my center. And what I do every day is just I facilitate certainly with acupuncture and all the different therapies that I do, but ultimately it's the people that practice um, a self-care lifestyle on a day-to-day -day basis that are really rocking it in their life and really enjoying their day-to-day -day life and not living totally stressed out and in fear and all those um, emotions. Great. Well, let's talk about some of the principles of self-care. So what do, you know, what do you feel like are the absolutely essential foundations to have good self-care? Well, it, you know, certainly to value yourself. Um, this, the first pathway that we speak about always is to be your own um, self-care or healthcare advocate. That we, so much of it we can delegate, but but majority of it is really about you know the choices that we're making each morning that we wake up. So that piece is really important. That empowerment piece and and helping people realize that they're not a victim of our our healthcare system. That we really that it's calling forth our, you know, most empowered selves to um, to live the life that we want to live. So, you know, rituals are really important. We we start our our series really with thoughts and Buddhist medicine. I think that's absolutely one of the most important branches, so to speak. That that if the thoughts that we're running through our mind 24/7, that's self care. Are they are they negative? You know, like supposedly 60,000 of them of our thoughts are, and how we can redirect those thoughts. And then food is huge. So that's one of you know self care. What how are we nourishing? ourselves. How are we nourishing ourselves? It's always a big part of the message of the self-care revolution is that we're as healthy as our 70 trillion cells. So what are you doing day to day to take care, to not only um, fortify, but to sustain healthy cells on a day to day basis? 
I know that um, my wife has done a lot with um, Chinese medicine, and oftentimes their recommendations around food are quite different than some of the, the quote, new paradigm folks in the, in the West who are always recommending lots of raw. And, and, uh, and so I'm curious about your perspective on what do you really consider an optimal self-care diet? You know, that's what's great about Chinese medicine is it's different for every single person. Of course, you know, when I do pulse diagnosis and tongue diagnosis and do a thorough history, it becomes evident, like for the raw diet can be, like, and, and even a vegetarian diet can be the absolute wrong diet for many, many, many people. I mean, that they don't even have the strength to, to digest properly or they're too cold in nature. So, that's one of the things that I love and attracted to me to Chinese medicine originally is that it's a it's a big piece of of what we practice is educating each of our patients on a healthy diet that's suitable for them, um, and that's not something you're necessarily going to see when you go to the average doctor in this country that's going to recommend. Mm -hmm a warming diet, a cooling diet, um, some spices are good for some people and not for, for other people. Um, so uh, sugar, you know, even healthy sugars, too much healthy sugars that we often see in some of these diets out there are, are too dampening for even a healthy body. So um, it's, it's, that's what's so nice, that we're all individual and we all need different, um, different ways of uh, practicing health self-care. And so what are some of the signals that uh, that somebody ought to be eating a more of a warming diet or a cooling diet so, so to be able to kind of discern a bit without it? I mean, so you can go to a practitioner who's going to diagnose you, but also just from the self-care perspective, how can you see the signs that you need to do more or less of one thing or another? You know, and tongue diagnosis is really a great way. Like if somebody has a very pale tongue or they talk about that they're always cold, and, um, you know, cold hands, cold feet, that's a, a sign that somebody needs a more warming diet, especially at this time, you know, winter wellness. Here we are. Uh, this is a time that we tend to need more warming foods, soups. You know, a great example that people even crave soups and teas, a um, lot of great medicinal teas out there that we wouldn't be as attracted to in the warmer months. So so we are cyclical beings, and, and the Chinese really honor that that cyclical pattern of health. So, um, you know, women, let's say, um, you know, I work in fertility, and so I look at, you know, women if that if they're too cold in the womb, you know, looking at changing their diet, um, for that purpose and and looking at movement, certain movements that would be conducive to healthy qi and blood movement. Mm -hmm. We're all about, in Chinese medicine, your qi, your blood, and your shen. Those are like the three pillars. You want healthy qi to move your blood, and you want a healthy spirit. So you need the oxygen moving into your brain and, and beyond. So shen, shen means spirit? Shen is spirit, yes. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, it, how, it, it, how do you what, what do you eat? What do you do in your diet to get more shen? Uh, I what do you do for you know heart? Uh, great, they're really good peas. I think there's certain spices. I think oxytocin. You know, so things that um, phosphatidylserine. So you know, think about your hormones just being in balance is it really fosters a healthy spirit, and then of course physical movement and meditation as well. But your your specific question about food, I I just think about things that um eighty eight percent dark chocolate is good for my shen on a regular basis. Nice. Well that's I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who are happy to hear that. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um but it, it you know it's a feel good uh food. I mean really, you know, the the cacao that's in it, the zinc that's in it, um it just it makes you feel good. Yeah. Mm hmm Let's talk about um, just vitality in general. So, I'd love to get some of your tips on how to um, sustain a, sustain vitality over your lifespan. Okay, so you know, being your own healthcare advocate, number one, but number two is really about food and, and thinking about food as voltage. Like, what is a lot the alive food that's really going to turn on your healthy cells? And I think you know many experts out there really believe this is eighty percent of the solution to people who are not feeling vital in day-to-day -day life. And you see that even in very healthy people. People are exhausted. So you think about foods that um, that 
that enliven you and that are right directly from the earth. So a big, a big message of the self-care revolution in my own personal practice with all my patients is to eat a live food close to the earth. It's great that if you have a farmer's market where you can get food right from organic farmers, and that is just one of the best ways to bring um, health and vitality to your body. And one of the best representations I have, our best visuals, is that to think of it yourselves as either raisins or grapes. So raisins, you know, if your cells are like raisins, that's inflammation. And so we have an epidemic of inflammation going on, and that those are cells that are not being hydrated. So um, um, a highly charged diet has high water content. And what's really brilliant about nature and, you know, the fruits and vegetables that are out there, they're bioidentical to nature. And you're getting the right proportion of minerals and water that we really need to get, that we need to get into our cells to really turn on our whole system. So that's a, a, a big message. And then, um, you know, I'm really big on earthing. That's a huge message. Um, and one of the most important breakthroughs for me as a practitioner, I was probably 18 years into my practice when I realized that the most essential thing to, or really the holy spark that turns on our whole cellular being to allow us to, you know, think, to our heart to beat, our body to move, is that we need this electromagnetic field of the earth. And that is one of the things that we are deficient in. We're not getting outdoors nearly as much as we need to. And so I think that is really essential that, um, of course, it would be nice if we could You also feel that the, it's the bare, the bare feet on the earth that's really important there? I think so. And then, fortunately, we have what I call benevolent technology that can mimic the earth's frequencies. Uh, we see those in some of the Tesla mats that are out there. But, of course, there's nothing better than being outdoors. I mean, this is why when I ask audiences around the country and internationally, where do you feel the best? It's always outdoors. And we, mm -hmm. if we really need – so there's a field around us that we can't see it, smell it, taste it. But that field is absolutely essential for our, our health, our inner world, and, and our feel-good hormones as well. And, you know, right now, most Americans are living 95% of their entire life indoors. And we're around all these electromagnetic, uh, I call it pollution, that really is affecting that healthy cellular metabolism that we really need um, to turn on our electrical system so our biology can work. So simple. How much Just time, let's, let's say you're working at a typical office job or with a computer, how much time outside sort of refreshes the batteries before you have to get back to desk? You know, I think if you can get at least half an hour, and of course we need the vitamin D from the sun too, but taking a break is so important. It's like your reset button just to be outdoors. And I tell a lot of my patients, you know, the ones that are having difficulty getting up and they have major adrenal fatigue, you know, one of the first things to do, drink your water with lemon, go outside, no matter what temperatures, just go outside and just take in the freshness of, of the outdoor air. And if you live in a city, it's still better in many cases just to, to get outdoors as, as often as possible. Let's say a minimum mm. of a half an hour. Of course, exercising, I prefer the people avoid gyms and get outdoors and, and walk and do whatever you love to do outside. Um, but I, I think it's, it's, it's a real missing piece because we are very much deficient in the vitamin E, the energetics of the earth. And, and mm -hmm. it all stems from that, you know, in terms of how, our, how we're functioning on a cellular level and what sets us up for, for dis-ease. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of that, this insight also just jives with the Chinese medicine understanding of how important the qi is. So you're getting more qi flowing from being just outside and in connection with the earth, basically. Exactly. And there's a very powerful point on the bottom of the feet, a kidney point, kidney one, called gushing spring. And, and when you're barefoot, especially on ground that's wet, um, that those, those ions really act as a natural antioxidant to the body. So it really just it, it ignites. It really turns on your electrical system. And that's one of the most important things I, I like to educate my patients on, too, is that we're electrical beings. I mean, before, just like the Earth is an electrical system around it, before our biology and our chemistry works, we need a healthy electrical system, and that's where eating healthy foods in the pH. Everybody knows how we need to have a little bit more alkaline body. But if we just get the simple things of healthy minerals, so magnesium, zinc, potassium, and, and water, and if we get in the 
important thing is with water is not only that we drink it, but we need to get it in ourselves. A lot of people, so that's another whole message of, of hydration. Um, but to get our electrical system is in, functioning, the electrical spark of the earth, plus we need good water with minerals. If we could just have that, <laughs> we're in a much better shape than, than most people. Where do you stand on the um, the alkaline water that isn't mineral based, but they do the separation? You know, we have one in our system in our center here. Um, you know, I'm not totally sold on those water systems. I'm just not. I mean, I'd prefer that people can get as much water, like literally eat your water, drink your water. Um, I think that they. I just I like structured water. That's if if we could all have structured water that's more bioidentical to nature, that's the best. So we have a system that we invest in in our center, 4,000 square feet. So we have that. So structured water that's not, um, you know, doesn't have all these other too much, uh, you know, chemicals in it. It helps our body absorb the water better. Hmm. If this is something that's that that more and more people are learning about. I think those those. Um, Alkaline water systems sometimes they're they're too alkaline and and in the wrong body people have to be careful. I, I'm just not convinced. I haven't found a water system out there that I'm I'm absolutely 100% confident in. But it's better than certainly um, drinking bottled water. Mm hmm. Well, and what are some of the issues with bottled water that you see? Well, certainly the plastics in, in bottled water. Um, and the fact that you don't, you don't know the source, you don't know how long it's been in the plastic bottles, I think that's a messing with our hormones in, in many, many ways. Um, I think it's better to have some type of water filtration system. It doesn't have to be this alkaline pH system, but, but coming through your, your home is, you know, the best way to get water in your body without resorting to plastic. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about Chinese medicine. I know you've got kind of a unique um, approach to it, and it kind of brought, draws this larger thing. What I'm always intrigued with is how different systems begin to evolve as they come into relationship with other systems. And I think we're kind of in this unique phase in history where all of our wisdom tradition, all of our medical traditions are starting to, in, you know, interrelate with each other. So I'm curious, like, how you're evolving the practice of Chinese medicine in your own in your own practice. Well, I was trained in traditional Chinese medicine, you know, originally 23, 22 years ago. I've been to China. Um, I've studied Korean acupuncture and Japanese style. And in and, and all these years, I've just kind of combined everything that I've learned, and that's what I bring to the, the table. So I tend to do more of a Japanese style, which is a gentler technique of acupuncture. And I uh -huh. find that I... Get, get excellent results with that. But really what I when I think about my evolution, I also bring in really exciting technologies into my practice. I have um, PMF devices. I have like four thousand dollar, twenty five thousand dollar devices here that really activates the electrical nature of the body so that my any treatment that I do is even more effective to help get people out of pain, to help raise the voltage of the cells because you can't get disease in, in a healthy cell. It's just not possible. Hmm. Um, I have something called a Photon Genius, which uses the best of light technology and also infrared sauna. And so, you know, I see a lot of people with Lyme's disease and all kinds of autoimmune diseases, a lot more people with cancer. Um, you know, I, I, this is, I'm thinking about this in your original question, you know, of why, the why of the self-care revolution. I remember, you know, about two years ago, in an hour and a half period, I had three women in their 30s with cancer. And I thought, Jeez. this is, this is not good. This is, this is like, what is really happening? And I see a lot of men and women in their 20s with, with cancer these days. And children with serious allergies and asthma. And so it's, it's this piece of the Chinese medicine, which is so comprehensive. And that's what attracted me. Because it was, it's not just giving a pill and that's, you know, that's going to be your solution. Um, it's much more involved. I mean, Chinese medicine is, you know, receiving the acupuncture and herbal herbal therapy. I studied in China. That's 90% of Chinese medicine is herbal therapy. So I bring a lot um, to my patients in terms of Chinese and Western herbs 
that really helps to take, again, under-functioning cells, deficiencies in the body, um, helping to get people's hormones working. That's absolutely essential. So that's pretty much what I do. I just bring the best of kind of east and west. And that's what I, my, my practice is called. Um, well, it's actually called East by Southwest. I practice Eastern hmm. medicine in the nice. Southwest. Yes. East by Southwest. I like it. So you've got to be really creative in today's world with the demands that we're seeing, you know, in terms of what people are suffering from. It's very challenging sometimes to diagnose. And that's what I love to do is, like, figure out what is, what's not working. But then also to make it really simple, if I can just get their cells working, if I can get the ATP that they're mm -hmm. producing energy in their mitochondria, the basics, again, like just making sure people are properly hydrated, that they're getting water into their cells, because a lot of people drink a ton, like I said earlier, a lot of water, but they're not hydrated. I see it all the time. Um, and then changing the diet and just turning on this electrical nature, like turning on this vibrancy in the body that's been dormant. Um, and then, again, disease can't live in a healthy environment. Mm -hmm. What is um, oxidative medicine? I know you, you've included that in your practice. I do. I, again, because of um, the broad spectrum of patients that I see in my practice, oxidative medicine basically is how can you bring more oxygen into a system and how can you counteract all the oxidation, which is the breakdown of health in the body. So you hear about antioxidants. So, for a lot of my patients, I do what's called um, ultraviolet blood treatment, where I treat the blood under UV light. It's a spectrum of UV light and ozone. So UV light that will counter any, you know, cancer cells or um, certain viruses, bacteria, parasites. I see a lot of it people with fungal overgrowth. I see that so much. In fact, um, that's really one of the things I, I, I feel like is essential that people are being diagnosed with lots of different types of infection, like especially sinus infections right now in winter time, when what they're dealing with is a fungus. So I use these um, oxidative therapies. So also uh, vitamin C drips, where I do 25 to 50 C, cc's of vitamin C. So these are people who are dealing with very um, severe viruses, um, bacteria, or just unknown illnesses. And it's just a way to up-level the, the oxygen, the way in which the body is utilizing oxygen, but it also these oxidative therapies increase naturally one's ability to produce glutathione, which is one of the most important um, um, antioxidants in the body, hydro, uh, um, hydrogen peroxide even, we need hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide. So um, interferon is another one. And another thing that I do that's probably the most popular IV therapy that I do is called the Myers cocktail. I, I, we do that several of these every day. So people come in and they had a cough for three or four weeks they can't get rid of, or some of my asthmatics, the beginning of a cold coming on, I'll give them um, this infusion that takes five minutes, so it's an IV, and it's primarily vitamin C, B5, B6, which is great for adrenal fatigue, which many Americans have. And then it also has magnesium and calcium, uh, hydrochloric acid. It has about 12 different items in it, and then I can also, I can uh, change it a little bit to suit exactly what my patient is going through. So it's just another way for me in my evolution as a practitioner to respond to the calling of so many more sick people. So mm -hmm. in, in one way, I'm, I couldn't be more excited about a lot of my colleagues. I mean, all these people, wonderful people that you've been interviewing, Stephen, on, on this wellness series, um, they're People are getting the best books out there, and, and they're really getting their message out in a big way. So it's really exciting to see that more and more people are really know the essentials of living well and, and to practice good um, uh, food. Is in that just really are, are how do I say even with the self care revolution, it's like a new mean. Like you're you're getting it in your brain that food is medicine, exercise is medicine, meditation, yoga is medicine. That getting back to nature scene. This is a huge movement, so it's it's exciting to be part of it in the way that we are in our center and the way I, I I'm practicing it with my patients. So I'm optimistic. Even most Great. days I well, have. well, I love the optimism and I share it. Um, so folks, we we can take some questions. Um, okay. So if you're on the live line, you can you can hit star two or put it on the webcast. And before we have people grab some, what, love for you to just share your vision of how, the future of healthcare. So as all this integrative work comes together, what what does it really look like to have a holistic healthcare to you? I see that 
all of our schools are completely revolutionized with this healthcare message and self-care message that we're only feeding good, healthy, organic foods to our children and that we're educating our parents and, um, you know, we're, we're making our progress in with governments around the world. Uh, I just was spent some great time with Jeffrey Smith who did the, the movie The Genetic Roulette and that, you know, fortunately, you know, doctors are now telling their patients not to eat or consume um, genetically modified foods. So, but it's really one person, each person, each person choosing to take care of themselves on this deep fundamental level um, to really shift the collective. So it's, it's, that's my dream is seeing each and every person being their best, you know, living their best year, knowing that they're invaluable, that they matter, and the only way to live a fun, fulfilled, and uh, the life of your dreams is to take care of yourself in every which way. Beautiful. Um, we'll go to a caller from Vermont in a second. If you have a question, star two on the uh, on the live line or in the webcast. And Vermont, you're live. Hi. Do you hear me? I yes. can. Oh, yippee! Lucky me. I am so thrilled. Um, I um, really do um, appreciate what you're what you're sharing today. My question is this. I do have um, and I've been diagnosed with major fungal and yeast, and um, I have very strong mold allergies. I also have thyroid, adrenal, and, and iron deficiency, and all of those things. And um, I am sort of this person where, that's been dancing back and forth between, you know, a raw food diet and um, – you know, all the different diets to try to, you know, heal my gut and heal myself. Um, and, and you know, part of me really does believe in Chinese because I do not think I can handle a lot of fruit, which which I eat on a raw food diet, and a lot of cold food because I am always cold. Um, and, and so I'm trying to figure out, you know, really what direction to, to go in because, unfortunately, I spend too much time, you know, you know, reading and philosophy, you know, and, and, you know, every philosophy seems to be right. Um, but if I really want to change to what's going to work for me, given what I've told you, um, what do you suggest? And, um, to, I mean, it, it are, you know, the people that, that um, oh. do you believe in, I'm sorry, do you believe in a plant let's, let's diet? And, let's go ahead and have her answer. Okay, uh, for you, I'd recommend a, a paleo diet. Anybody who's got a fungal issue, you, you're absolutely right. I don't, I don't think your diet is serving you at all right now in many ways, that that staying away from um, high sugar content fruits is not going to be of service to your body. It's just going to feed the fungus. So staying closer to um, greens, more greens, just vegetables as much as possible. And, and are you vegetarian, did you say? Well, you know, I I, I I have been a vegan. I can't do um, – because of uh, food allergies, I don't do any, any dairy or eggs. Okay. But anyway, I, I mean, I, 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 I think say, maybe I should be eating animal protein because I can't do grains and beans and all that kind of stuff. I think the paleo diet would be optimal for you, and I think it would really um, it dramatically change – the, this fungal pattern, but also I'm a huge um, advocate of oregano oil. I like it in the emulsified form. I prefer you get it from Biotics because I know it. I used that very well for 10 years, um, and you need to know that it's not easy to get rid of a fungus. You got to, you know, like at least a 90-day plan. Um, it, it's, it's, and again, for people who are this this time, we're talking about winter wellness. We're indoors so much, so that we're much more prone to these fungal infections in our bodies. So getting outdoors would be really helpful. I would recommend getting a really good 100% oregano oil. Put that on your feet a couple drops every night because it's very powerful to, to use oils topically that way that will also help. Um, I'm not a big fan of the antifungals prescription-wise. I just, I'm just not. I think if you can deal with it with your food, um, Changing your diet, using the oils, using the ADP. There are a lot of other Chinese herbs that are that are quite good. And then also look at you know what's you know I think about people who've got fungal infections in their body. Really look at the emotion emotional state. Like what's really eating at you. What's what's 
It is emotional, physical, and yeah. spiritual, and I've had this for many years. It's systemic. The doctor, the, the allergist, right. immunologist said it's everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. So it. I just want yeah. to mention too that the, even the Mayo Clinic, you know, so many people are suffering from sinus infections, and they have even agreed eighty to ninety percent of sinus infections are fungal, not bacterial. Hmm. So people take all of these antibiotics, and they're just feeding the fungus, and it's it's. It, it just sets up this cascade of dis-ease in your body. And, you know, the Italian writer, I can't, I can't think of his name right now, a medical doctor who talks about cancer as a fungus. So when you look at cancer, like when it when they take it out of your body, when what does it look like? It looks like a fungus. So how are we feeding the fungus in our day-to-day lives? Not just, again, with food, but we talk about the emotional state and being indoors and damp environments and, um, you know, proper hygiene, all of it. Foods, foods, oh my goodness. Um, how many people are, foods in our refrigerator, our refrigerators are highly irradiated. Uh, there's a lot of electromagnetic pollution going into our food, so it's set up for, for fungus too because it's robbing our food supply of oxygen. So it's another another piece. So for you, um, uh, trying not to um, stick, always having organic foods, not keeping foods in the refrigerator too long, 48 hours max. Um, there, there, there are solutions to that too, but that's just some of the recommendations I have for you. Great, great. Let's go to a question for Linda from Oregon to ask food, and, food and herb uh, self care suggestions for adrenal fatigue. Okay, adrenal fatigue is another huge, huge issue, um, and I see it every single day. And I pretty much always will supplement with uh, adrenal tonics, um, adrenal cortex if, if people really need it. Phosphatidylserine is really good. We, everyone knows uh, what the word cort- what the hormone cortisol is, so we need ways to balance that. Um, I would just say cooked foods are, are really helpful, but not overly cooked foods. I would say, you know, good vegetables. Um, properly, uh, I want to say properly, I want to say grass, uh, grass-fed grass meat products are really healthy. There are too many people that are vegetarians that really do need the amino acids that are in B12 that you can get in um, healthy meat supplies. So those are some of the things. It's just sugar. You've got to stay away from sugar. That, that really affects um, adrenals in terms of the food supply, but also finding ways to bring healthy rituals into your life because what's causing the adrenal fatigue in the first place? How are you living your life day to day? How do you start your day? I'm a big fan of starting your day in, in a wholly pure way, whatever that means for you. You know, how do you start your day um, to not run your adrenals all day long because they're so sensitive and they produce a lot of, like I said, necessary hormones. Um, so foods, again, just that are alive, that have healthy voltage in them, um, that are low in sugar would be your best choices. Great. Nancy from Norristown says, uh, should one who really needs sunshine move and live in a warmer climate and find a job there? <laughs> um, you know what? There are lots of good solutions. Take vitamin D3. I think most people need to supplement. I treat a lot of people who even work outdoors in the forest service, and they're still low in vitamin D. Vitamin D is absolutely essential. So take, you know, five or 10,000 uh, IU a day, and there are a lot of great supplements out there. You don't have to move. I don't, I don't think that's the solution because there are people who live in, in high sun areas that are still vitamin D deficient. So you need to get outdoors more. Um, you know, so vitamin D, when I think of my top supplements, that's definitely one of them. And I also, also want to just mention zinc. I did a, just did a YouTube video on zinc. It, most people are deficient in zinc, and 200 enzymatic reactions in the body are zinc dependent. So your uh, for, uh, sexual function, your brain function, your immune system hugely impacted by zinc. So everybody should get a zinc test or just take extra zinc, especially in the winter months, because it is um, it's just going to help up level all of your your main system. Even your heart is zinc dependent. Cool. Um, I'll take one more, and then I want to make sure people know about how they can take some great next steps with you. Um, let's okay. Preeti from Raleigh says, uh, what are your thoughts on restless leg syndrome? She uh, says that uh, notices gets worse if her calves are cold, has a clean diet, no gluten, no sugar, no dairy, exercise regularly, 
and take supplements and superfoods. I always look at B12 and folic acid deficiency, look at vitamin D3 levels, really important, look at zinc also. Okay, electromagnetic, uh, I, I, again, I speak a lot about electromagnetic pollution, but a lot of my patients with restless leg syndrome, there's, it's, it's basically like a liver, in Chinese medicine, wiry pulse. It's almost always that case, or somebody, again, with severe adrenal fatigue, and um, the neurons are not firing off properly. So I, I really love people to sleep in rooms that are you completely unplug, like literally don't have anything that's electrical around your head. Everyone who's listening to this message, <laughs> listening to this interview, I say that for everybody, sleep in like a zero uh, pollution zone when it comes to electromagnetic pollution. Um, so even, even that, like a, like even like a, a clock? Exactly. Even a clock that's certainly plugged in. Um, cell phones, I can't believe how many people have their cell phones charged up near their head, even if it's two or three feet away. Of course, proximity matters, but just keep it out of your, out of your bedroom. Really, mm -hmm. really critical. The no but electronic restless. zone. The no electronic yeah. zone. Depends. Yeah, I just don't know that restless leg syndrome is relatively new. This is not something that we saw 30, 40 years ago. It's, it's really part of this new um, time that we're living in where we're electrified. <laughs> That's a good mm -hmm. way to put it. When, when you talk about that, is that also applied? Let's say you've got you know a lamp next to the bed or something like that, and you turn it off, and is it still running current or no? Yes, it's better to turn it off. And, and people who travel a lot, like, unplug everything near your head. Because it's, it's why we have the sleep epidemic that we have right now, and that people should give themselves a good two hours uh, free before they go to bed to be. And certainly never put a laptop on your, on your, on your lap because, you know, that's, it's, it's, it's heats up, and it it's causes a lot of disruption in how energy flows mm -hmm. in your body. And it's, it's, mm -hmm. um, we're, we're, we're living in some interesting times. Another 10 years, mm -hmm. I have a 12 year old and a 14 year old, we've grown up in screen time. And you know, we have our, our rules about it, but, um. So screen free by 8 p.m. if you're going to bed at 10? Absolutely. The yes, but really make your room like a sacred sanctuary where you unplug everything so you can go into that deeper sleep because that's a huge self-care message. How we sleep is vitally important to our, our health and to recharge, be recharged every day. Awesome. Well, you are totally a wealth of information on so many subjects. I mean, we could just keep going, but for, for oh, folks who want to... Um, <laughs> For who want to who want to learn more from you and all the work you've done with Self Care Revolution, I know you've pulled together a special offer for just for winter wellness participants. It's a third of the normal price for a some of your best stuff. So I'd love for you to share a bit more about that. And uh, for folks who want to explore taking this next step of self care and health and wellness with Robin, you can go to winterofwellness.com forward slash Robin R O B Y N. So love to hear more about what you got there. Okay, if you want to find out more about the self care revolution, join the self care revolution dot com. But we put together the best of our season one, which was um, our whole module on exercise as medicine. Just lots of simple strategies, like how ten minutes of exercise can really completely shift your mood, your attitude, and how much how important that is for your longevity. So we had about 13 experts to give their best information for you. And um, also, Be Fabulous at Any Age, another 13 experts who didn't hold anything back. Um, and just, just showing that, you know, as we age, it doesn't have to be anything but fabulous. We can age fat in a fabulous way by just practicing simple strategies, many of which that I've shared with you today, but um, learning EFT, emotional freedom technique, um, soaring with self-esteem, like seeing where you're not feeling good about yourself and how you can shift that. I remember one of our speakers talked about that that in that module. So it's just a huge amount of, of information, but easily accessible and, and really came out, uh, you know, just it, it was you know fun and not uh, in any way, um, you know, What's the word? It, it, when we think about health, it's just so much negative energy. I just think it's just full of positive, proactive things that you can do in day-to-day -day life to feel fabulous. Hmm, that's great. Feel great. fabulous as you okay. lose weight and heal different issues. I mean, it's a really great package to put together. Right, and, and, and really reclaim your vitality. 
because many people, like I said, are, are exhausted in today's world. So these simple things you can do, and this big message of my whole talk today is it's just these simple things that you can do. I mean, getting back to nature, um, high voltage foods, exercises, medicine, meditation, all those good things that it's hard to feel, again, when you have healthy cells, you have health. So people do fear their longevity and worry about getting disease. You don't have to. And again, I really think that suffering is optional. You don't have to suffer. And that's that's why um, we we are we're going to continue this series of the self care revolution just to continue to bring the best information to all of you. And and it's just been such a pleasure uh, seeing all that you do with the shift because that's what the shift is all about, right? When each one of us is living our best the best health, our best life, and our in offering back to the world. Love it. Well, I love the, I love the practicality in what you're sharing and the just. The, the very holistic approach, drawing from so many different traditions and practices, and really putting the focus on the, the little things that we can do. It feels absolutely essential that we do that. And I was taking notes on some things I've got to I've got to do in my own life there, which was part of the great benefit for me of do of hosting this series. So, I love what you're up to, and I love the the focus on uh, really empowering us in our own health. So again, the package with Robin that you can buy, it says 23 in-depth interviews with top health and visionary leaders, as well as journals, track your progress. It's all just $97 at winterofwellness.com forward slash Robin, R-O-B-Y-N. Really great offer and hope as many people as possible take you up on that. So um, what a joy to be with you and to learn oh, from you. Thank it. you, Robin. Thank you so much. Great. All right. Well, that's it with Robin today. We'll be back on with the Winter of Wellness tomorrow at noon. So I hope you're getting as much value as I am from this whole series. Can I end? And really, go, go ahead. You I want, want to end more with one of my favorite quotes that I think encapsulates our message today. It's a Walt Whitman quote. And he says, now I know the secrets to make the best person is to grow in the open air and to eat and sleep with the earth. Nice. Great beautiful message. <laughs> That's a beautiful self care message. Well thank you so much, Robin. And thank you look so much. It's been a pleasure to be with all of you today. Wonderful. Great. And so we'll be back on tomorrow at noon. And uh again, Robin's package on the best of the self care revolution is at winterofwellness dot com forward slash Robin. R O B Y N. So thanks all and have a great rest of your day. Bye bye. All and have a great rest of your day. Bye bye. And have a great rest of your day. Bye bye. And have a great rest of your day. Bye bye. And have a great rest of your day. Bye bye.